the Waymarker School agrees it is best to build by box model and with good geometry, but sometimes sculpting is a nice way to add detail to a model. For organic objects there is likely no better way to model. Since many story builders are create smaller illustration objects and not elaborate sculptures, it's less of a problem, but polygons are polygons. We build with Blender to add detail and to optimize while we do it. To come to terms with two seemingly opposite needs we resort to repotology and image maps that add a kind of faux detail to our models. These details add more than a rough surface. The details work with wind light and open sim light tools to cast nice shadows in order to suspend disbelief. This tutorial shows you how to turn a high poly model into low poly that doesn't radically reform the high poly, and building a canvas ground that is related to that form. As I've grown to love the wonders and fun of texture painting, particularly for story building illustrations that need a touch of difference, I wanted my paint strokes to work for and not against the model's detail, while not adding a lot of fuss and bother to my enjoyment. I was after all a secret fan of the Bob Ross PBS painting program even when my fellow artists were steering me into another direction. A direction that was not nearly so much fun as Saturday afternoons with TV Bob. So trying to bring it together the way markers joy of texture painting program live on from YouTube. Since these slides are fully annotated, there is no need for much of a voiceover. This means that transcript readers will need to take a look at the slides. The slides will help with all the button pushing. There is some manual repotology to be done, nothing major, and the art of sculpting or texture painting is a whole other art to practice, but most of work discussed here is done by Blender Render or Cycles and Blender's add-ons. So to get started we need to decide to use Blender Render or Cycles for the first phase, modeling and sculpting. The second phase, baking maps is done in Blender Render and the third phase is conveniently done in Cycles. Yes, we flip back and forth, an action that only helps us to address our learning curves. You will need to find a nice reference photo for modeling. I had no intention of copying the model but I am careful to find one that is not copyrighted or allows for limited use. My use was limited. I wanted to find an odd sand rock so that I could make clue glyphs for my Brantley story. I plan to refer to the photo of the odd desert sand rock, but only for inspiration. I only wanted to see its form. At this point I am not too concerned about my adding polygons to my model, but like always I started with a cube and extruded until I was satisfied that it looked close enough to what I took from the reference. I chose to mark two seams and unwrap it, because I always do. I did not necessarily need to do so. I wanted to see how dense it became after I used subdivision surface to prepare it for sculpting. Yikes, it grew very dense, but no worries now. Sculpting is an art form. Some story builders are professional story builders. Most of us are not but I do like to work with clay so sculpting appeals to me. Add detail with sculpting brushes. Have fun. Don't stress. Notice poly count rising. So now that we are relatively happy with our sculpted model with all those thousands of polys, we need to make a low poly model. If you don't need to watch the B Surfaces Repotology video short, you can continue on. Otherwise, the video is a good reminder about how to complete the process.
you are back or continuing. This was the result of using the B-surface repo process. Fairly decent copy of the original form. While the model need not be perfect quads, it should be free from scratches. A scratch is a face that is doubled, the normal are facing in the wrong direction or it's frayed in some way. I have lots of older models that are covered with scratches. No amount of clear seal is going to fix them. The low poly version must be marked and unwrapped. The fewer seams the better. I decided to use two so that I could eliminate stretching. I could have used one, but I chose two this time. You can check the stretch by using the end properties menu and scrolling down. There you will find the stretch angles to check. It will color code any problems. Because the B surface process did its work, there was no need to fix any faces. If there were bad vertices issues, the colors would change to green, orange or the dreaded red. Hope you kept your high poly model in the layer where you left it. Now we need to apply the detail from the high poly, 24, 634 triangles, version to the low poly, 1156 triangles, version. The extra polygons will not go with, only the appearance of the detail, digital graphic smoke and mirrors. Note. If you already know how to transfer detail from one model to another you can skim through the next 20 or so slides. The transfer of data detail is essentially the same for any sort of detail. For this inside tutorial about transferring data we will bake a transfer detail normal map because many Blender artists want to learn how to bake that map more than any other. For the overall project we will need to make several detail maps, and the settings will be different, but the process will be the same. Textures are added to both the high and low poly models so you can see the difference in the slides, but it is not unusual to have no material or texture on your model at this time. Both models were unwrapped, but not yet textured. Be sure your high poly version of your model is sitting snugly in its layer, and that it is listed in the outliner. Notice the dense detail that was sculpted to the high poly model. It is important the models line up from one layer to the other. I usually move the high poly version to the first layer, toolbar, and the low poly version to the layer directly beneath it. So it is easy to select both. More often the models will appear black or pink. This means your model does not important data attached to it. In this case it's a material slash texture. You can add the texture to the texture slot in the texture painting mode as shown, or, since you are in Blender Render, you can enter it normally through the Material Icon Properties menu. If you do add your material and textures there, you should check to see that they are stored securely in the Texture Paints Slots panel, because you will need them to be there later. This is where and how you enter your image through Texture Paints. This is a good habit to start. Takes less time, and it's more convenient for texture painters. Any image must be saved to the project or a file. If an asterisk shows up to the upper right of an image, it means it was not saved so save it or you will lose your work. You were not required to mark your high poly version, 
because are not likely going to need it once you've fully transferred its detail to the low poly version. The low poly version is now your focus, so it needs to be marked and unwrapped. It is so nice to have so much detail incoming with so few faces to unwrap or worry about. This unwrap will do fine. Most of the unwrap is dark blue with a few lighter blue faces. If you use the end properties menu in the UV editor you can select stretch angles to determine whether your UVs are stretching too much. The more yellow and reds, the more stretching is going on and a problem for sure. Marking seams is one cure. The other is good in the first place geometry. These models are perfectly in sync. If you don't translate, move, your models throughout the process, you will not need to worry about whether they are lined up correctly. If you did, you will need to use your snap to cursor options to get them lined up or the process will fail to work. Now for the transfer. The steps must be done in order. Option mode. Use the outliner. 1. Select the high poly model. 3. Now shift and select the low poly model in the outliner. 3. Now shift and select the low poly layer too. This step by step process is easier to say than execute. You can get distracted, coffee can get spilled on the keyboard, and your cat can jump on your head. No problem. Just unset it all and follow the steps again. You are going to get lots of practice today, because you will need to repeat the process transfer and bake several texture maps. So the best way to test yourself is to complete baking a normal map, the most popular map used to create those authentic looking creases and pockmarks. Select the camera icon, scroll down to bake and see what needs to be checked, right. For single normal bakes you will not need to check selected to active, but this is a transfer that does just that. So yes, be sure it is selected. This project was done with dynamic topology sculpting, so do not check multi-resolution. Note it's a purplish blue color, not red, yellow or green an indication of UV problems. For this type of transfer bake bad results rarely occur, because the low poly geometry is satisfactory. The best part is the great decrease in the poly count. You will see the detail is obvious. Subtle but obvious for this model. If you needed more detail it would need to be sculpted into the high poly model. Now we can bake our other texture maps. One of the easiest maps that packs a shading punch is the ambient occlusion map. You need to find two icons in the properties menu. The world and the camera. Please see highlights that define how to set it up for the bake. The detail is subtle. Reminder, this is not for immediate use. It will become part of a blend, and then used for a canvas painting ground. There are several good tutorials about how to make the AO pop more, but this map works fine for this project.
The next two slides are reminders for the normal map process. The settings and the outcomes, so we don't need to spend much time on that. One of the most fun maps to make is the vertex map. Vertex painting is done directly to the model vertices. We don't use it very often in OpenSim, because we need a texture map anyway, but it's fun to use along with texture painting or to make cycle maps. A favorite is the dirty vertex map that can be adjusted for color and tone. The outcome for the vertex looks pretty good. Notice the highlights and lowlights. It can be used for specularity or bump. Its purpose for this canvas ground project is to help the texture artist know where to paint in the very details that it exposes. Once you bake the initial texture maps you may want to paint a preliminary draft using the color you find in a reference swatch. Or you can wait until after you use the cycles process to blend the initial texture maps together. Texture painting is an art like sculpting, different styles and different uses. It isn't necessary to texture paint at all, particularly if you are a venue maker and you are not a story build illustrator. You can digitally paint with render or cycles and leave out the personal touch. Since I want to story build, I choose to texture paint. For more about texture painting see the schedule. Coming soon live texture painting classes. The default brush is sometimes difficult to use. Too fuzzy for me, so I duplicate the draw brush and change the curve setting to a steeper fall off. It makes for a less fuzzy stroke and gives me more flexibility. Since this tutorial is not meant to be a texture painting lesson, I will not go further. The best way to learn to paint is to paint and play with the paint. The preliminary paint outcome. Finally cycles. The least stressful phase of all. Be sure to change to cycles and check use nodes to see first nodes appear. You will be switching back and forth between the texture view and the render view instead of the solid view. You can easily see what nodes and noodles you are using. For this project, if you are a beginning cycles user, I suggest you use the following slide to set up nodes and bake the canvas ground to paint on. If you are comfortable with cycles, you are welcome to set up your nodes any way that works best for you. Baking the canvas ground with cycles. Use for your texture painting. Much of the detail is already painted for you. Smiley face, the best way to learn how to use nodes is to start simple. View many videos and learn about why to use the nodes. For this project it is best to take the leap and jump in. Add each node and notice where the noodles are attached. This will help you to get used to the whys and wherefores. This is not the basic way marker set up. We do have one that includes a mapping and input coordinate. Please see the slide at the way marker school. Once the cycles blend is baked. Easier than the transfer baking if the nodes are set up correctly. Just go to the camera icon. Change the samples to something reasonable like 200, if your computer will handle it, and bake combined. Be sure you select the baking node for the baking. Your texture nodes that you can check with the texture view, each texture, and render view, the blend, will bake onto the blank map you imported through the bake node icon.
Your final baked map is ready to export with your low poly model. You can also export out the normal and vertex slash specular image you saved. You can delete the high poly model at last. Note, of course the poly count could be decreased even more by merging vertices. You may want to run a duplicate process if you are going to do that. Of course I am not inviting 500 hundred avatars into my region at once. See you at the Waymarker Joy of Texture Painting.